Are there any announcements that should be made this morning? I'm not aware of any except Barry has an announcement. He wanted to come up and tell us what he's got to say. Oh, there you go. Okay. So uh, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, two weeks from today, on Sunday, the 15th of October, um, the administrative board's going to have a quick special meeting. We have a furnace unit down in the bottom of the uh, education building, which uh, has quit working. And so we're going to, uh, we're in the process of getting bids to look at a new unit. And the administrative board will need to consider those bids and consider putting a new unit in place before the weather gets cold and we get chilly. So uh, we'll do that on Sunday the 15th, right after church here in the sanctuary. So it should be a short meeting. That's the only thing we're going to talk about and try to decide on that day, but uh, wanted to let everyone know that that's going to be coming up. Thank you, Barry. Any other announcements to be made? I'm not aware of any myself, although it would be a good idea to glance at the blue sheet inside your visitor, not visitor, bulletin, and see if there's something, a committee or something that you don't want to miss. Okay. Um, are there blessings to be given? Yes. Say it again. Theoretically, she said she's cancer-free, th so that's wonderful news. Thank you all. That's nice. I know a lot of us have been praying, and that has helped. It always does. Yes, Stacy. 37 kids came back to CCF. Yay! 37 came back to CCF. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing all that, Stacy. That is such a blessing. Any other blessings we should mention? Okay. Let's go ahead and begin our worship service. We want to worship the Lord.
Please stand and join me for our opening hymn, number 695, God of the Fertile Fields. Heavenly Father, as we gather to worship you here this morning, we come with praise in our hearts. We thank you for all the ways you have blessed each of us, and we pray for you to lead us on the path you have chosen for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. As faithful followers of you and your divine ways, we ask for you to guide us and help us recognize and always be aware of Jesus' sacrifice for each of us. For this, we are so thankful. We now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Young disciples will please join me at the front of the communion table.
Good morning. Good morning. We have a, a few, oh, we have one new person with us today. Uh, Danny, would you mind introducing our guest with us? Sophia. Her name's Sophia. Sophia, it's good to have you with us today. Believe me, on Wednesdays, her voice isn't as soft. Okay. What? I thought I saw Jeff back there. Jet. Um. Can, can you tell me how you would define the word prayer? What is prayer? Yes. I can't. Yes, that's a perfect answer. It's talking to God. It can either be us uh, speaking or just sitting in silence. And you got an A-plus for that answer because um, lots of times we pray when we want something or need something, right? We're constantly asking. But I want you to think about for a moment that in the Bible, prayer also means listening. Jesus went into the wilderness for how many days was he in the wilderness? Does anybody remember? Excuse me? Yes. 40 days and 40 nights. Right. Perfect. Um, and he wasn't talking the whole time. He went into the wilderness to listen, to hear God's voice. Have you guys ever tried to listen for God's voice and just be quiet and listen? Have you ever done that? It's amazing. Uh, how many Christians do not realize that we are to sit in silence before God and to listen. And that voice will speak to our hearts. And our hearts are made in such a way that we're able to not only hear, but also to feel the feelings of God. Okay? And so when you're quiet, when, I, when you might feel how God feels about what's going on with you, but also with other people. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit moves you and gives you ideas on how to respond to help people, to do the right thing. So today, during communion time, during worship, I encourage you, during those moments of silence, is to just breathe in and breathe out, and try to clear your mind so that you might be able to hear the voice of God. Okay? Let's pray. Our loving Lord and God, I ask that you be with our young people. Bless them this week, but also teach them to listen, that they might be led by your Holy Spirit. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Hello, Henry. Quite a few things have happened in the, the lives of our members this past week. Um, and there are, you'll see there's, there's quite a few that are highlighted in your bulletin insert. Um, and there are others who need our prayers. Um, I just received this. Emily Ewald, she fell and fractured her hip and had surgery at... Uh, the hospital here in town. Um, please remember Emily in your prayers. 
Also, Fred Zonders, uh, he was to be discharged this past week. He should be home. Kim Manier, please remember Kim in your prayers as she continues to heal and prepares, hopefully, to come back to work soon. Also, Anthony Escobedo. Bob Brewer, Caitlin Brown, and Carol Saltzgaver passed, and her graveside service will be tomorrow, and uh, it will take place in Oreo. Uh, many of her friends, Esther and others, um, are grieving over that, and uh, please remember them in your prayers as well. Brothers and sisters, we take these concerns and we place them before Christ and the flower and loving memory of Carol I place at the Lord's table. Now let us continue our worship as we prepare for our time of prayer. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, we would experience the joy of your love, the wondrous compassion of your grace. You call us your children. You call us your friends. You have searched us, and you know us, and you called us by our names. O oh God, may we truly be yours and yours alone. For those who find themselves in the depths, may your love illuminate their darkness in grief, in sickness, and loneliness. May we hear the sound of your voice, feel the firm grasp of your hand, because you are always near, O oh God. So may we breathe a breath of quiet, a breath of thanksgiving. May your peace enfold us in the wind and smile upon us in the stars. Because where can we go from your love? In all the corners of the earth, your grace pours out. Vital as rain, 
as delightful as music. And we give you thanks for your symphony. O oh God, at this time, we clear our minds and open our hearts that we might hear your word, something you would ask us to do. We listen for your voice, O oh God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your presence. May we be faithful to what you have given us. And we also give you thanks for your care. In the name of the one who saves us from sins and the fear of death and death itself, your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. For our stewardship moment for today, I want to say, we want to be good stewards of all the Lord has entrusted into our care. He has given us responsibility for people and for things. We are truly blessed by our Lord. If we think of stewardship responsibilities, our list would be quite long. We can list our financial resources and material possessions, our talents and time, our families, and our church, to name a few. We need to consider how we can better manage these assets our Lord has given us to be more efficient in handling them and always, may all we do be pleasing to God and show honor and bring glory to our Lord.
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bring these gifts today to honor you and give back a portion of the blessings you have bestowed on us. One of the great promises of the Bible is that the more we give, the more we receive, not necessarily in material possessions, but in spiritual and eternal rewards. For this, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I forgot to mention that uh, Carol's visitation will be at 9 o'clock over at Short's funeral home. Um, and it ends at 10.30, and then they leave for Oreo uh, for the 11 o'clock gravesite. Today's Old Testament scripture lesson is found in Isaiah chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, and there were very, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can those bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will come and will come flesh to come upon you and cover you up with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain so that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord God when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Amen. Today's theme is about the breath of God, the Spirit. One of the best hymns for that theme is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. One of the most visionary prophets of the Old Testament was a priest named Ezekiel. He lived over 2,600 years ago. He witnessed the terrible siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in which Jerusalem fell in 587 B.C. He spent years in exile, along with other Jewish leaders in what is now modern-day Iraq. And there the hand of the Lord was upon him to proclaim hope 
in a time of hopelessness. Ezekiel's most remembered vision is our scripture lesson today. It is the vision of the valley of dry bones. You know about them bones, them bones, those old dry bones. And even if you're oblivious to the Bible, you know the story. This morning, as Paul Harvey used to say, well, let's learn the rest of the story. You see, Isaiah tells us that the valley of dry bones is very, very real. This vision was the third major vision of Ezekiel, a vision of hope for the people in the valley of despair. Verses 1 through 3 reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and placed me in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. You alone know. This valley is very, very real. In the 13th year, the war between King Zedekiah and King Nebuchadnezzar one-third of Judah's population starved to death during the siege. One-third of the population was killed in the battlefield, and one-third were carried off to Babylon to serve in captivity. The Valley of Judah contained the decayed, bones of slain victims, denied the dignity of a decent burial. Their flesh was picked clean by the birds of the air. This vision of Ezekiel was more than a figment of his imagination. He had caught a glimpse of them as he was carried away in shackles from his home. And he saw, as he went to Babylon, those dry bones lying on the ground. And he said they were very, very dry. Such valleys are real. And the bones are many. The Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. is almost more than anyone can bear. Yet the world must never forget that six million Jews, two-thirds of Europe's Jewish population, were massacred. Many without even bones to be remembered. Such valleys are too real. Do you remember the schoolrooms in Rwanda where 40,000 people were murdered within six hours one spring day back in 1994? Do you remember the Khmer Rouge and what Pol Pot did with the genocide of three million in Time Magazine's images of mounds and mounds of their dried bones? Or we can go back to modern Iraq, and we remember the images of graves that were exposed in Iraq, the result of Saddam Hussein's ravage rampages. What's ironic is that took place in the very same territory where Ezekiel had this vision. Yes. Those valleys of bones are very, very real. But for us in this room today, gathered in the comfort of this sanctuary, 
we also have experienced the valley of dried bones. Cancer is relentless. The marriage is dead. The job seems to be pointless. The grief is so deep. The days are difficult. The nights are so long because our minds won't shut down. And we respond, much like Ezekiel did, O oh Lord, can these old bones live? And Ezekiel's response was, I don't know. Only you know, my Lord and my God, because it's in your hands. I don't know if there's any more life left in these old bones, any hope remaining in this valley. Lord, it's in your hands. It's all too much for our small minds to comprehend because these valleys are very, very, very real. Ironically, it's in this wilderness of death that this prophet is called to prophesy. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And so in verse 7, he says, I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound in the bones. They all came together, bone to bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them and then God said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to it this is what the sovereign Lord says come from the four winds O breath and breathe into these slain that they may live and verse 10 says, so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. And they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Let me tell you a little biblical secret that's hidden from us in our English translations. The word for wind, the word for breath, and the word for the spirit in the Bible is the same word in Hebrew and in the translation by the Septuagint. It's the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the word is ruach. In the New Testament, it's pneuma. So when Jesus talks to Nicodemus about being born of the Spirit, he uses the metaphor of wind, breath. The Spirit is blowing in the wind. It's all around us. We can feel it if we're sensitive to it. Well, I know meteorologists are asked to predict the wind. Physicians are asked to treat the breath. And theologians and preachers send us the spirit. The Bible makes no divisions. That same spirit that caused Adam to become a living being is a Holy Spirit that comes from the breath of God, the winds and fire at Pentecost. To breathe into those old bones, life. Life. New life. Not just existing, but life as God intended. I've talked to a fair number of people in my ministry through the years who seem to have lost contact with God. They say, I had one elder in a church when we were talking about uh, the presence of God. 
and God speaking to our hearts. And he says, you know, he says, I'm very active. I serve on committees and I serve as an elder. I've been the head of the elders, but I just don't feel anything. And what he was describing, he was describing being active in administration, but not in the body of Christ. Hmm. He was in the Valley of Dry Bones. He found it hard to pray. But God is closer than we think. In fact, God never, ever leaves your side, even when you feel that God is absent. He's always there. You just weren't aware. When you think that you have lost God, this is what I would like for you to do. Breathe. You have to breathe anyway. But I ask you to take a deep breath through your nose and to exhale exhale through your mouth. Don't think about anything. Just breathe. Breathe the air that God has given us. Breath. My brother is a respiratory therapist. He manages that department at Carl Hospital in Urbana. And he tells me that about, most of us only use about 20 to 30 percent of our lung capacity. Biology teacher, Devin, is that correct? Beats you? Well, I'll take that as a yes. Most of us are shallow breathers. When I was in high school, we used to make fun of people that were mouth breathers, shallow breathers. When I took a yoga class back when I was almost flexible, my favorite position was at the end of it, and we would lie on our back after we stretched our body out, and we would breathe, a guided breathing session. And you talk about relaxing. Breath has that power on us. Many of us breathe on the surface, not from the depths of our beings. And that's why we are so short of breath most of the time. The same is true with our spirituality. We dabble around on the surface. A real spiritual person is a person who knows how to breathe. That old hymn. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Now you know where I got the children's message today from an old hymn which is truer than true. And this morning, when you go to the Lord's table, some of you will hold on to that cross that Becky gave us, and we will listen for the word of God to come upon us. May God breathe new life into you. Let us stand and let us sing our hymn of commitment. Death we follow thee.
thief lifts up his eyes, that his pardoned soul is worthy of a place in the paradise. Lord, we are able, our spirits are thine. Remold them, make us like the divine. Thy guiding radiance above us shall be a beacon to God, to love and loyalty. Are ye able still the master? Whispers down eternity, and in heroic spirits answer now as then in the Galilee. Lord, we are able, our spirits are thine. We make us like the divine. Thy guiding radiance above us shall be a beacon to God, to love and Christ invites all to his table, and he asks that you come as you are. But he asks that you open your hearts up to the love of God. Let us meet Christ at his table. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come now to this table to be fed. We come with grateful and thankful hearts, grateful that we can come in spite of our imperfections and sins. Thankful to you for making your love real to us by the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. As we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, create within us pure hearts that we may listen to your voice, submit to your commands, and act as you lead us. 
open our eyes to the needs of the world that, with compassion, we may live out our lives as your servants. In the name of Jesus Christ, who empowers us, we pray. Amen. Christ gave us the gift of this table that we might remember on the night in which he was betrayed. He took the loaf, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner he took the cup of blessing and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. My blood shed for the sins of many. Gracious God, we give you thanks. I pray that you have spoken to the hearts of your people, that they might hear of your love, your love for others, and that they might be moved to do new acts of ministry to share love with others. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let us remember to breathe in the Holy Spirit this week that we might find new life. Amen. Amen.